Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And in this video, we're going to talk about the Hollywood strikes, the writer's strike, and how ridiculous and desperate some of these writers have become. First up, we're going to talk about Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. At in, Hollywood. At Hollywood in California that a group of WGA writers went to picket at the theme park. Yes, yeah, so that was the first thing. Uh, that was the first thing. Then we're going to talk about how desperate they are that they're looking for unemployment benefits even though they're on strike. Now, I don't know the legality of this in California, but a lot of states, if you choose to go on strike, uh, the government doesn't feel like they have to pay for that. Well, I don't think that's the way in California. They're trying to make laws that pass to change that, but it won't be until January. Yeah, so let's let's uh, talk about all this stuff. We're going to have a doozy of a video. We're going to have a little bit of uh, dismal Disney in here because these, these writers are saying they're going to go to Disneyland next. Mm -hmm. Speaking of dismal Disney, by popular demand, we have put up a dismal T-shirt. There's going to be another design or two. We, we got a couple. It. We got a couple. This is the first design. This is just dismal. It's a non-Disney castle on fire. Yes, because, you know, we had trouble before trying to do a shirt with dismal <laughs> Disney for that reason. This is, this is a parody T-shirt with a generic castle on fire. Not meant to be confused with the castle that has the mouse and the princesses. Well, it's not the same castle. They're in another castle. The, Your the, princesses you know, are in another castle. The, the meaning, the meant to be, this is, is up for debate, but this is not the castle. Anyway, so I, those are there on shopclownfish.com. Shopclownfish.com. Get your Dismal Kingdom t-shirt. So um, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, if you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woohoo! Uh, for more objective Disney news, go out to piratesandprincesses.net. Uh, that's Geeky's theme park blog where she'll probably be talking about this today. But, I'm um, going to be, yes. So this is how desperate these writers have become that they are actually at the theme parks now picketing. Yes. Yeah, apparently. So I think Universal Studios Hollywood, their op this is on their opening night of Halloween Horror Nights. They opened a little bit later than Orlando. And apparently the WGA, about 50 of the writers on strike, showed up at the entrance of the uh, theme park. Yeah. So, look, I, I get that the theme park is owned by Universal. It's Universal Studios. That being said... Um, isn't this kind of outside their jurisdiction a little bit? I mean, I, I, it's a little bit weird. I mean, they've done it like, and, and they were going around picketing, uh, active studios that were, that were like filming for the writer strike when the, before the actors were on strike, they would go show up at these, these places. Cause then the actors would, would honor the picket line and they would not, they would shut down filming. They did it like a daredevil and stuff like that. But now they're turning up at the theme parks. They're handing out flyers. I don't think this is going to go the way you think it's going to go. It's just going to piss people off. Yeah, this is definitely good. Like, look, this is the thing. Like, even if we agree, and we've said before, so that for those of you who are low IQ, who haven't watched our videos and haven't ingested what we've actually said, uh, we have said that on some points, we do agree. Most all points, except for uh, the one. Kind of like the studios. Most points, okay, fine. You want more money if you're bringing it? Sure, we agree with that. You want to make sure that we don't just, uh, just dump you all for AI? Or that we don't just, you know, scan your likeness or whatever. Okay, we can agree with that. But the, the writer's room, that, and we'll talk about this as we talk about the situation that these writers are in right now. The number of people in the writer's room is the big issue. That being said, they said the group of writers, thought to be around 50, turned up at the entrance of Universal Studios to hand out leaflets to thousands of customers. The plan is to hand out 5,000 flyers. And look. To let them know why you're striking. They have fucking you're striking they know now why pissing them off yes this is the thing if, so so if you're trying to get people on your side and you're trying to get the general public on your side i think people are tired of seeing the picket signs and they also know now thanks to amp tip they basically just blew the lid off of the, the financials that some of these people were turning down 11 to fourteen thousand dollars a most week most people going to the park don't make that I guarantee no. you, some of them probably do, but most normal people don't make that much money. Now, I do, I do agree. I guess I can agree. Sort of, if that's the, those are the terms of the WGA or the SAG after whatever that the celebrities that were in the Honda Mansion couldn't go to Disneyland for the premiere because that's the rules, right? But handing out flyers 
to random theme park goers is not going to endear them to your cause in any way, shape, or form. Right now they know your cause. They It's been four plus months. It just tells me they're that desperate that they're going to go strike, go picket at the freaking theme parks. They're probably like, oh, I can get away from the striking bullshit if I go to the theme park. Nope. Especially no. in Hollywood. Trust me, in Hollywood, they know your cause. That's not a problem. They're not the ones who don't understand. They live with it every day. A lot of them probably are impacted by the cause. God. It's a new method. This is desperation. It's a new method in the strikes, which has seen writers pick at the studio entrances for nearly 130 days since they walked out. That's important because we're going to get to the, uh, you know, the unemployment benefit thing. The theme park business has been largely unaffected by the strikes, helping keep revenue rolling at the studios and the TV. Now they're because looking at they're that. different. They're different departments. They're they are not different the same divisions. Thing. Disney, for those of you who don't know, they, they do have a separate division just for their theme parks and their cruise lines. Yeah, you know, it's like they're they maybe under the entertainment umbrella, but they're 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 not all like run by the exact same people the whole way across. It's like there's different, you know, structures, parks, resorts and experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's all part of the Disney company. But yeah, they're going to look at this like I again, I don't know how Universal is set up exactly by guarantee of the theme parks are a completely different entity from NBC Universal that's filming TV shows and movies mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Deadline understands the writers are considering leafleting an important distinction compared to picketing at other theme parks in order to try new ways to send a message they to don't studios. Care. Now you're just now, now it's blowing up your face because you know who's gonna be pissed? Not the studio so much, the guests that you're harassing. Because that's what you're doing. You're harassing people. They could technically say, hey, you're loitering because it doesn't matter. Now it depends on where they're doing this at, but they're dropping them with littering. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're handing out leaflets, then what's, you know, cause that they do have policies like, Hey, if you're religious organization or political organization, you can't hand out stuff in front of our theme parks. And they might look at this and be like, yeah, we're going to have you, you know, trespass because you can't be handing this stuff out to our customers. But I don't think Universal is as bad as Disney is about that, but they they might go to Disneyland. Oh, good luck with that. Yeah. So the reason they're doing it is they said the studios are refusing to, to re-engage. Well, because you told you told them no. I mean, we saw what you were offered. And it, other than the one thing about you want ma- minimum mandated writers, you want all paid more money, all given residuals, all given all these you know, this, these things. You know, you want guaranteed, you know, minimum time frames and guaranteed work, which they promised that too. You just all want that. You all should be getting it, even though the market doesn't allow for all of you to get it. And that because because uh, SAG after and, and WGA want their union dues from everyone. And now you're going to be like, well, it's not enough because you aren't hiring. You're only agree- you're only agreeing to make sure like two or three of us work, not ten per writers' room. If the writers' room needs five, we should have fifteen. No, that's not how this works. So the comments are interesting. This is anonymous, right? Uh, it says WGA writer handing a flyer to a person in line that just paid 150 bucks for their ticket and 25 dollars for parking. Here's why we're striking: the evil studios refuse to pay us more money. I think you should cancel all of your streaming services and go home right now to show your solidarity with us. Person in line, no. The person throws the flyer into the garbage and continues their conversation with their friends. Exactly. This what is a waste exactly of time. What's going to happen? Yeah, this is ridiculous. This is like nobody's going to. They're, again, people are going to theme parks now to get away from this shit. And this is overreaching, just like with YouTubers. They tried to tell us and Instagrammers, all those people, we weren't allowed to, to promote or talk about the movies or talk about the studios or anything. And we don't even have a dog in this fight, right? And it's the same with people that uh, go to conventions that aren't allowed to talk about shows they did 20 years ago. Yeah, this is mm-hmm. massive overreach. All, all, and then all the fans all paid. So what they're doing is they're just pissing off their fans. The fans they need to keep their shows on the air, to keep the ticket sales coming, to keep the actors that get to go out to, to meet and greets with fans at these events you know, paid to come. You know, you're going to piss off all the fans. And then your next brilliant brain you know, move was to go down to Hollywood Horror Nights and piss off those fans. Yeah. And, and again, you know, this is the general public. They don't have a dog in this fight. Most they of them don't, don't care. Care. Which they is don't care. It's part, become part of a problem. I think we're going to mention it, which comes into place here. Um, 
here's the thing. We were talking before about the Marvels and about the fact that um, they weren't going to get to go to IMAX because of Dune 2. Well, since Dune 2 has been moved, it has been announced that, that the Marvels will be running on IMAX. However, they will be sharing the screen with other movies, including um, the new uh, Hunger Games film and then another one. Taylor Swift. The Taylor Swift movie made a ton of money. Yeah, but that one's not coming out. That one's not. I don't think they're going to be sharing the screen with that at the same time. I guess it's going to be out before. I don't think that's one of the runs in rotation. But they're going to have, I know that one's one that's going to be there. I know they got to deal with for that, but I don't think that's going to apply to this. So they're going to be, yeah, like the Killers of the Flower Moon and the new Hunger Games are going to be in rotation with the Marvels. Marvels didn't get their own exclusive, you know, window like Dune 2 did. They were at the Goldman Sachs Communica. Cacopia. Communa? What the hell is that? Communicable diseases. Telecatubbies? (laughs) Telecatubbies. The Goldman Sachs. Communicopia. Communicore. Wasn't this an Epcot? Wasn't this an Epcot thing? Communicopia Technology Conference of Teletubbies with Titties. Anyway, they're at this convention, this, 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 you know, marketing hoo ha and they're talking about um you know what's going on and they had the uh, IMAX CEO Richard Gelfond up there yeah. and basically one of the two takeaways here is Disney's going to is going to double down on releasing the marvels cuz they really can't push it back right, right. but at the bottom they did I, they they said something he said something interesting they said that a couple things that they're going to put local language films in select markets in the theaters. They're not too worried about the strikes because what we'll do is if we're in like China, we'll put local films in IMAX in China and they'll do better. Yeah. The Chinese and, and movies like, will know, do better Korea, in China. We'll put like, South Korea, will put South Korean films on the screens. They're going to go local markets. Um, and then they said, uh, they said there's a lot of levers to push. So no, I don't think people are that worked up about the strikes because they're, it's not really going to, they still can watch other things. Yeah, that's what I, I don't think. That, again, this is a really bad time to strike because the pandemic taught us, especially with theaters, that people will pay to go see old movies they like, probably like better than a lot of the new stuff coming out, and they'll pay to go see it again. They'll go see Jurassic Park on the big screen again. They'll go see Batman, 89 Batman again on the big screen. We've seen it. E.T., they were doing like Steven Spielberg marathons and people were going to the, the drive ins. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, a chance to see movies maybe you haven't seen in IMAX. People will do it. They'll be yeah, like, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, and then other movies that were kept out, you know, maybe they want to consider maybe more theaters could run The Sound of Freedom because it's really <laughs> funny to me because a lot of these uh, I- uh, industry blogs now are like, what did The Sound of Freedom get right that everybody else got wrong kind of article? So they could always do that. I, I don't think I want to see that in IMAX, though. I don't think I want to see it in general just because not, I, 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 no, it's not that I don't want to see it. I don't think I can. Yeah. Because I just am super sensitive to that kind of thing. And I just, I just, I, I can't, but I know a lot of people did and that they have, and then they will. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, you know, even the IMAX guys like, oh, we got lots of other things we can stick in there. People just don't seem to care. Yeah. He's saying that he said, people don't care about the strikes average. People. So when you get in their faces at a theme park and you hand them flyers, yeah. They're going to be like, look at this shit. They're going to go out to social media and be like, can you believe this? I paid to be here for Halloween Horror Nights. I paid through the nose and I got handed a freaking flyer from the striking writers that turned down eleven to $14,000 a week. Actually, we have the uh, flyer. Uh, uh, we have what it said. You have it right here. Yeah. So we're like, oh, I'm sure somebody posted it. And, and sure enough, they did uh, last night, just arrived to the opening night festivities. Oh, they're like, you know, go WGA. Yeah. And look, people are going to, they're going to support whatever, especially if they're, they're working in Hollywood. Right. But they said, here's, here's what it actually says. So just imagine somebody that's not terminally online. That's not in the business. But they live in Hollywood area, so they did somehow have no idea what's going on. Or they travel from like Utah or something to get because that's the closest theme park for them, and they just want to go but to Hollywood. Yeah, for one of these big ones, yeah. And and have uh, have have a fun time with their family. This is what they get. You want to know what's scary? Universal and other major studios have kept us from working for over 125 days, unwilling to make a deal that fairly compensates uh, writers. That's not true. That's not they true. They offered you a deal that more than fairly compensates that you, you turned but down. it didn't give you minimum of like 10, 15 writers in the writers room like you wanted. So that's not true. The rides and attractions you'll be enjoying tonight are based on movies and television series that were created by writers. The fact of the matter is Universal would have it no theme park without us or any content at all. Yet the company refuses to pay us justly for our significant contribution to the abundant success they've had off our creations. Again, that is not quite true. Uh, The only thing that they're not giving them is the writer's room. Mm -hmm. So they are willing to pay 
Some of you, fairly, just not all of you. If Universal were to pay us what we're asking for, it would cost them just 0.027 of their revenue. Uh, as you enjoy the theme park, this is like PETA. This is like PETA. Like, I hope you like that hamburger. Here's the video about how that cow died, assholes. As you enjoy the theme park tonight, please take a moment to acknowledge contribution of writers to the experience. Please also give some extra attention and appreciation to the workers you encounter. Uh, they, too, are in a struggle for fair pay and treatment from Universal right now. I guarantee you the Hollywood writers currently get make, paid way more money. Get paid way more money than somebody you know, you working at Universal. Some of your paycheck and giving it to those Universal employees, you know, just saying. Appreciate your your support. We're all dying to get back to making movies and shows y'all love to watch. Well, they kind of are because isn't the WGA and SAG after cutting side deals with like smaller studios to make these horror movies? I mean, well, at least as SAG after is. And then we can't we can't write until you know we we get a fair deal. You had one. So this is the uh, the leaflet crew right here. I think mm -hmm. so. They're they're owning it. They're proud of it. You know. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about this because now they're pushing for unemployment benefits too. Again, I don't know the legality. Well, they explain it in this. here. So they said that they're pushing California lawmakers to grant unemployment benefits to striking workers. Now, isn't that interesting? Other people have stri have been striking before for other other companies or whatever. Uh, you know, different unions have have been striking other parts of the country, even California. And it, when they would be like, "Hey, we should get unemployment benefits," they weren't giving them either because, well, you know, that's not what it's for. Right. But when it's them, the laws need to be changed so that we can get paid while we strike. Yeah, right. I mean, so it said California, they currently do not receive unemployment pay when they are on strike, but the state lawmakers are working on a bill, SB 799, that would extend benefits to workers who have been on strike for at least two weeks. Okay, so this is going to massively be overused. Yes. Absolutely, because you can basically just say, "Guess what? I'm on strike, and you have to you have to pay for it." Yeah, what's going to happen yeah. is they're going to be like, "Oh, well, you're covered to live." Well, then we can strike longer, I guess, right? The, the companies are going to be like so worried about their people to get them back to work. They're going to be like, "Well, let the let the state pay for it," and the state in California, because California is a shithole. At this point in time, we it, all know it. I don't care if you'll get pissed. I'm not wrong. Well, it depends. Certain parts of California. I want to clarify. Not all of California. But there's, it's so bad that some companies refuse to even put businesses there anymore. Okay? It breaks my heart. I spent half my childhood in California. I lived in the Bay Area, and it was beautiful. It was just absolutely well, People beautiful. are fleeing California I know, now. I know. I never drugs, thought I would. Right? It's so bad. And now they're going to somehow have money to pay the striking writers and actors <laughs> so unemployment for uh, gig work. Wouldn't it be nice if you could get uh, you could get unemployment if you were you couldn't work your Uber job or your other gig economy jobs? You know, there were times in my life, uh, one time in particular, that uh, I got I got laid off and um, I couldn't find a job because the economy was terrible. And, um, I didn't get very much in the way of benefits, even though I had paid in for years mm -hmm. and uh, it would have been nice to have an extra month or two, but no, no, I didn't, I didn't get it. Yeah. It was right you when know. they decided to pull the, the extended unemployment benefits across the country. Yeah. They had extended. It was right then. That was when it happened. Yeah. They had extended unemployment. So there were people getting unemployment for like a freaking year, year and a half. I just wanted like an extra month. And uh, we didn't get it. And I'd paid in for years. I'd been working consistently since I was 15 years old. And I'm like, the one time I need it, the one time I need it, I don't get it. But uh, lots of other people did. And they probably had spottier work history than I did. Uh, but yeah, I said the unions are lining up to support it. And business groups have opposed well, it. Well, Imagine the that. Taxpayers are going to have to pay for it. Yeah, right. But well, wouldn't it be the taxpayers and the business and the and the studios we're going to pay yeah. for it? It's basically to make studios give you what the people they want. The thing is, it is going to be over. It's going to be overused and misused. Uh God. Even though we're unemployed, none of us can access unemployment. The thing is, they're different. They're going to look at this as being like you're you're voluntarily unemployed. You went on strike. You're voluntarily unemployed. We're almost 130 days into this. I'm going broke. I'm sure a lot more. I, I mean, look, I don't think everybody who is striking right now is completely on board with it, but that is what the union decided. And this is one of the, the downsides to joining a union is you have to go along with whatever they're doing. Even if you personally don't necessarily agree with it, you have to do it because you're all in it together, except for the ones getting the side deals. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. They're just stop doing their own thing.
their savings has dwindled down to almost nothing. What is savings? Most people don't have that, okay? Mm. I'm relying on financial help for my family and visiting food banks. I mean, look, I don't want to wish this on anyone. I I want to clarify. I don't want to see people lose their houses or have to go to food banks. I mean, we're talking there's kids involved here and everything else. I don't want that. But... I think they're just, they're really being super over the top on what they're demanding for this stuff. Like, I didn't get my way for 100% everything I wanted, which that you never do when it comes to negotiations. It's called so negotiations. I'm gonna, yeah. I have to go to food banks now, and I want unemployment because the studios won't give me what I want, which is my, my, me and my friends all get employed instead of the, you know, the market demanding half of us get employed. And that's the way the market is. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. And here, look, there. this is uh, the California Chamber of Commerce guy. This is uh, Robert Mo- Motri. He said that uh, it would put further pressure on the state's unemployment program, which already owes the federal government more than $18 right. billion. Yes, California is one of the worst. Due to the pandemic, it would force California businesses as a whole to pick up the tab in the form of higher premiums. And California businesses aren't doing the greatest as it is because a lot of people went out because California was so ridiculous during the pandemic. So this is where he's correct. Someone who is on strike has a job and is choosing not to work to create economic pressure on their employer. That is fundamentally different than someone who has let go and has no idea when or if they were working. Exactly. Yet. Why aren't these people? I don't know. Again, I don't know the the terms of the union, but if, if it's a work stoppage, can't you go work another kind of job until you can start doing your writing or acting work again? Probably, but they can, don't want to. You don't want to drive an Uber? You're too good for that? You don't want to work at Walgreens. Oh, I know. You don't want to work at Walgreens because they get robbed and you're not allowed to do anything about it in California. According to an analyst for the assembly staff, there were 56 strikes in California between 2012 and 2022, and only two of which lasted longer than two weeks. However, so those other strikers didn't get special laws rewritten for their favor. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, we don't want to work, guys. That that Mostly they don't want to work. They want to work, but we won't work until we get everything we want. We all want to work because a bunch of them know they're gonna have to be, they're gonna be out of work. So great, they, now you wasted all your money, and you're gonna be out of work because they're not gonna hire you all back because there's too many of you. Now you just now you just were stupid on top of stupid because now you wasted all your money too. But you could have got something something else. People are going to look at this and they're gonna be like, what the actual hell? Like I got laid off from my job or for whatever reason and I didn't get unemployment. I didn't get that. You guys turned down eleven to fourteen thousand dollars a week. You've been voluntarily out of work for four months, and you're like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, and you were given an offer. Like you were a given month, an a offer. month ago at this point, or yeah. like weeks ago, you were given an offer, but you didn't want it. Yeah, I, you, know, you know what happened to me? My job, I thought I had security because I was I was management. My job, I just got uh, hauled into the office one day and they said, You're done. Here's the papers. Oh, yeah, they also said we don't have to give you severance because we don't have we're to give you severance. We're not required to by law. So we're not required to. Doing great. So they just gave them nothing. Yeah, the company was doing bad. Uh, I was management. I should have gotten severance package. I did not get a severance package. And then lucky me. All the uh, all the extended employment benefits ran out, mm-hmm. and and nobody was hiring. Right. So and that's yeah. just the way it was. And it was like too bad we had to make do. And now no one wrote, rewrote the laws for uh, for us. Nope. I was, if you're in an at will employment state, you know, like that California, it, it did go out of their way. You can't even get rid of somebody who deserves to get fired unless you do all these things. Other states, they can just get rid of you for any reason. Yes. And then they and then they they can say that they got rid of you for a reason that means that they don't have to pay unemployment. And a lot of times they'll screw you. Out of unemployment, you have to go to court for it. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm sorry if we sound like we're harsh assholes, but we come from a completely different world where you have to actually, you know, fight for, for legitimate reasons, not just because oh they didn't give me 100 percent everything I wanted. Quick, hot damn, let's go down to Universal and harass the guests. Yeah, this is insane. This you're you're not going to get what you want. You're not going to get 100. And what they're doing is they're they're going to lose support support yep. with their behaviors. Yep. 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 Stop. I'm just telling you people. We're not saying this to be jerks. We're saying this because we're trying to help you. You got to realize, one, these negotiations are negotiation. You are completely, completely right to ask for most of what you're asking for. We have agreed with you on like everything but the writer's room issue. The one thing the studios don't want to deal with is the writer's room because you cannot tell somebody who does not have, is cutting shows, cutting budgets, cutting everything, that they need to keep you all employed even though there's only work for half of you. I don't care, union or not, you can't tell them that. They're giving you everything they want. They're even giving you guarantees for work for work times and paying you more if you're on a smaller, a shorter stint than if you're on a longer one. Nobody does that anyplace else. No. And then 
you're still like, well, but we didn't get the guaranteed writer's room where we all get to work, so the union gets to keep getting dues from all of us, because that's what it's really about. And then you guys turned it down, and some of you guys are living in cars, and now you're like going to food banks, people are saying they can't take their kitties to the vet, which breaks my heart. Um, I hope that somebody down there has some, maybe some something that you could help them with so they can get their cat to the vet. But look, that's like, I feel bad for you because I understand I, I've been there. I've been like where we didn't know how we were going to keep our house and we didn't know how we were going to buy food and I've been there. So I understand where you're coming from. But the difference was I was there involuntarily. You're being put there voluntarily. And now you want laws changed to benefit you, but you weren't there supporting laws to be changed when it benefited others. Yeah, uh, I distinctly remember a lot of these these smug white color. Learn to code. Learn to code. Oh well, it's it's okay. It's a, a minor inconvenience that all these you know coal miners are put because we don't need coal. So well, it doesn't you know, impact our daily lives. It doesn't so. impact our daily lives. But yeah, you so. need to fight for us because because it, 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 it fighting for us is fighting for everyone. I, I love that they were like making they're implying that fighting for the, the writers union and the, the actors union was like you know everybody should support it because it was fighting for unions across the country when they did nothing when other people got, got had issues mm-hmm. and then they're so out of touch that the money they're getting isn't enough for them when that's more money on one show than most people make in, in year. like two years two years yeah I mean they're they're making yeah if, if you math it out they were making probably as much for one stint on a show as a two, a, few months. a two income household or more would make all year, right? So, and it's like, well, it's only part time work. I'm like, yeah, we but when you pay taxes, we have to pay taxes. Oh, wait, oh my uh, God, really? Well, guess what? This goes through, this thing goes through with the unemployment. You're gonna pay much, much higher taxes, probably, because the state's got a bankroll of this shit. You know, it's just like, because everybody's gonna want to go on strike. Because California just seems like everybody now is like, oh, we're all gonna go on strike, so we get free. Well, if they do this, they will. Yeah. Yeah. So good luck with that. I I think this is the like like, like we've got several several uh, uh, things here that are going to just all come to a head and the general public is actually going to turn on I think a lot of these people. Like, well, especially this if you're help when you're shoving they pamphlets escape, in their you're, face. You're, yeah, yeah Sanders shoving flyers in their face. Yep. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.